you can use Lightroom's split toning tools to give your images more punch. Let me show you how it's done turning this photo into this image and finally using split toning to increase contrast like this. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description. And now let's begin. As always, if you're just here for the tutorial part, feel free to check the chapters of this video to quickly navigate through them. First, however, I want to do the basic adjustments for this shot. So let's extend the basic panel. And right away, I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This lessens the contrast and I do have a little more control over the whole image. Exposure wise, this looks fine. However, I want to make the shot a little darker, bringing the focus more on the buildings in the center. I want to start this by bringing down the exposure a little bit. And I also want to bring down the highlights. This is mostly to reveal details right there in the buildings because those areas are super bright. And for the next step, I want to bring up the shadows, getting more details, all of the darkest parts. And then to add contrast, we can bring up the whites. While we bring up the whites, keep a close eye on the histogram and on those brighter spots because we don't want them to be blown out. I think right about here looks great. I don't want to touch the blacks. What I want to do, I want to bring up the contrast a little bit, just right about here. Okay, already looks much better with the added contrast. Now I want to work on the white balance. I do think I want to make this whole shot a lot colder. So let's bring down the temperature. I'm not trying to get an accurate white balance. I want to be a little more artistic with this shot. So let's bring it down a little more. Right about here looks good to me. I also want to bring down the tint. And what this does is it will help keeping the warmer color tones. As you can see right now, we do get a little more of a green color cast. This might be a little too much. So right about here looks fine to me. Okay, we're almost done with the basic adjustments. Let's go through the presence tab real quick. I want to bring up the texture just to make smaller details a little sharper. And I'm also going to drop the clarity, which helps to add some kind of very, very subtle autumn glow effect. And for the same reason, I want to bring down the dehaze. Wonderful. And at this point, we can bring up the vibrance. Okay, that looks good. Now you might think the buildings in the center do look a little bit weird with this heavy yellow color cast, but don't worry about that. We are going to fix it later on with the color grading. For now, I want to focus on the masking. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And I want to start working on the sky. For this image, I'm going to use the sky selection trick I have shown in an earlier video. What I want to do is first create a simple sky selection. And then we are going to say subtract and choose select sky. This way, we are selecting just the edges right along those buildings. And now I'm going to click on those three dots of the subtraction mask and choose invert. This will basically subtract all the edges of the landscape from the sky selection. And thus we're getting a much more accurate mask. So what we want to do with the sky is to bring down the exposure, making it a lot darker. And I'm also going to bring down the temperature to make the sky appear to be more bluish. This helps introducing some color contrast between the cold color tones of the sky against the warmer color tones of those buildings. I also want to bring up the clarity slightly just to make the clouds a little more visible or at least the structure in the clouds. Okay, let's do this one more time. Create a sky selection mask, subtract a sky selection and invert it. Then I'm going to say subtract and choose a linear gradient to take away parts from the horizon because I only want to target the upper area of the sky, which I want to now make a little darker by dropping the exposure one more time. Just like this. I'm using multiple sky masks because the higher up we go in the image, the darker I want the sky to be. And this way, by layering multiple masks over each other, we get a more natural effect. So I want to do this one more time. Let's create a linear gradient for the very, very top here. I'm going to say subtract and choose select sky to not affect the building. 
And then again, let's bring down the exposure. Wonderful. I do think I could use one more linear gradient for the upper left, for the upper right corner like this. And again, just bring down the exposure. Okay, that looks great to me. We can also work on the foreground for a moment. So let's create a linear gradient covering pretty much all the reflection down here. And I simply want to raise the clarity to make the reflection pop. Okay, I'm going to add one more linear gradient for the very near foreground since I have a feeling this is a little too bright. I'm going to bring down the exposure and thus we are leading the viewer's eye more towards the center of the image. Perfect. And I guess we are done with the masking. So we can take a look at before real quick. We started with the image on the left and you can see we do have a much better looking image with a lot more contrast. Now let's do some color grading. I'm going to do this in the color mixer first. Let's set the hue. As I mentioned earlier, the yellow buildings in the front do look kind of weird. I want to change that by bringing down the orange hue and as they will just get a more natural color tone in my opinion. I'm also going to reduce the yellow hue just like this. And I might even reduce the blue hue. This will give the sky more of a cyan color tone, which I think works quite nice with the warmer buildings in the foreground. Now with the hue setup, I'm going to head over into the saturation tab. And here we want to work on the buildings first. Let's bring down the red saturation. I'm also going to obviously drop the orange saturation and the yellow saturation. This helps tremendously to fix the color cast of the buildings in the center. And now I do want to bring up the blue colors. Okay, that looks great. Now let's head into the calibration tab. And what I want to do here is to quickly bring down the blue primary hue. And let's raise the saturation. Okay, now we're almost done with the color grading. But now comes the split downing part and here we can not only change the colors, but we can also add punch to this image. So let's expand the color grading panel and let's first set up the colors. I'm going to start with the highlights and I want them to be warm. So let's set the hue to something warm right in this area and bring up the saturation. Nice. Then let's go over to the midtones real quick. And here I do want to again make them appear to be a little warmer. I'm going to set up the hue to something around here and bring up the saturation. Wonderful. Now let's take a look at the shadows and we can improve the color contrast a little more by setting the hue to something cold. Let's set the hue somewhere around here and very, very carefully bring up the saturation. Wonderful. Now, what we have done is to apply certain color tones to the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. And thus, we just improved the colors of the image in a very, very subtle way. However, we didn't affect the contrast. For the contrast, we can actually make use of the luminance slider below hue and saturation. Luminance doesn't have as a big of an effect on the colors, but it does have a huge impact on the contrast. So right now, we're in the shadows. If I bring down the luminance slider, we will make all the shadows of the image darker without affecting the midtones and or the highlights. And as I bring down the luminance slider, you can see how this image will get more contrast. Of course, you want to be careful. And as always, if you adjust something regarding the exposure, you want to take a close look at the histogram. Since you can see right now, there is already some kind of overexposure happening. So we don't want to lower the luminance that far. Let's just use tiny amounts to improve the contrast of this image. I'm going to drop it very, very slightly like this. And now let's head over into the midtones. In general, if we want to add contrast, we want to make the darker areas darker and the brighter areas brighter. Now we already have made the shadows a little darker. We can now use the midtones and either make them darker as well and later on increase the highlights to improve contrast. But we could also, instead of making the midtones darker, just make them brighter. That's totally dependent on what you like. For this image, I think it makes sense to make the midtones just slightly brighter. Maybe right around here. And now let's also head into the highlights. And again, I want to use the luminance slider to affect the contrast by making the highlights brighter. 
I'm very, very carefully pushing it since we're already scratching on the overexposure right here. So be very careful. I think this looks great. We can take a look at how the image looked before the split toning and you can see turning it off, there's quite a difference between those two versions without split toning, with split toning. We can further improve this. Besides shadows, midtones, and the highlights, we also have a global setting. And again, we cannot only affect the colors globally, but we can affect the luminance globally. I think making this whole image a little darker helps improving the contrast. So what I want to do is to bring down the global luminance a notch. Just like this. Again, let's compare to before without split toning, with split toning. Perfect. Now there's just one more thing I want to change. And that is how you can add some extra punch towards the end of the Lightroom editing process by using split toning. There's just one more thing I'm not happy with and that's the color of the highlights. I think they could be a little warmer. So let's go into the highlights slider. In fact, you could also go into the midtones or the shadows, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to use this blending slider down here. This thing counts globally across highlights, midtones and shadows. So you can just play around with it in any tab you want. What I want to do is to bring up the blending and this will make the split toning appear to be stronger. Just like this. And I guess that's it for the split toning as well. So that's the color graded image. We can again take a look at before real quick and you can see we now have a real good looking image. So what is left to do? I think I want to apply some sharpening in the details tab. I'm going to drop the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking. Make sure to hold the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider so you can see where the sharpening is happening. And then I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. Now all that's left to do is to clean up the shot. I'm going to remove those poles in Photoshop and remove a few sensor spots as well. So that's not going to be interesting. I hope this Lightroom tutorial was helpful and I was able to teach you something new. If you have any questions about it, of course, feel free to ask me in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.